Woohoo! Oh, bloody hell. So, when I was doing my research for this thing, I found all the other TEDx talks to be really positive and inspirational, but my talk's going to be a little bit different today, because I am going to whinge a bit. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about open data, smart cities, and some of the language that surrounds civic technology, and how, quite frankly, it's bollocks. And I think it's bollocks because some of the most important people in this debate can't understand what we are talking about. And those people are community activists. Now, quick footnote before we go on. A smart city is a government-fronted project that uses tech and digital to interact with citizens. Open data is just information that's put out there that people could use for funding applications, make digital projects, or even social action stuff. OK, so let's get back to the point. So why do we speak like that? Let's face it, smart cities doesn't actually mean anything. And no one's really bothered to explain what open data is. It's almost like we're trying to impress each other as so-called intellectuals, but surely not. And I've noticed the culture of this within the social entrepreneur sector. That about you ever go to loads of events, and someone would bound over to me, go, hello, my name is so-and-so. I do this, come and work with me, you should know me, here's a card, and run off without even asking me a question. Now, it does irk me, but I do find it really, really funny. I do laugh about it, my friends. And even though I do laugh about it, I do have a sneaky feeling it breeds a social culture that we have to turbocharge the way we speak. And I've been part of the problem in the past. I've used words to try to make myself sound clever. I mean, I thought voyeur meant a person of knowledge for ages, which obviously means <laughs> idiot. So, I just got old and miserable, definitely old, or I started to realise that the intellectuals don't matter. It's the people that live and work in our communities that matter. And I know that sounds cheesy, you've heard it all before. But this is why it matters. Because if we're putting data out there as institutions or government, and the community aren't okay with what open data is or what they can do with it, then what's the point of releasing that data? Because nobody's going to use it apart from people who can make money. We need to work with communities to find a language that's relevant to them. This is important because you could argue that we live in a world of anti-intellectualism. From elections around the world to the Brexit campaign here in the UK. And though, do not worry, I'm not touching that, I'm not going political, <laughs> but it does have an impact on our work. During the Brexit campaign, Michael Gove famously said that people are sick of experts. And you could argue that a really small portion of the Leave vote was an anti-establishment vote. A two-finger salute to those boffins who think they know it all. And around about the same time, Jeremy Corbyn spoke out about digital democracy. And he was absolutely lambasted in the press. And the issue with that is, the first time some people would have heard of it, it already had a negative connotation. This is important because there are people out there in the community doing awesome, fantastic work with open data and smart cities, and this is detrimental to their thinking. Also, sometimes we try to explain things that we don't really understand. For example, central government puts a lot of pressure on local government to release information, data, be more transparent. And of course, local government wants to comply because they do fantastic work, very important work. But they're not asking enough questions of Westminster in regards to support and training. And then when you're taking that information and you're pouring it out to your communities, and you go, there you go, work with that, then of course there's going to be a bit of pushback because it feels like they're not listening. And also, I would happily admit, or not happily admit so much, that I've definitely got council colleagues who would say to me in private that they don't feel comfortable talking about open data and smart cities, even if they lead on those projects in public. They feel that they have to be the experts when they don't, because there are thousands, such as hundreds of thousands of people who live in their communities who will be more than happy to set their digitalization agenda for them. Now, I've got a small analogy about this. I hated school, I left school with hardly any qualifications, and you know you won't believe me, but I was a little bit naughty. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I hated the most was maths. And I was absolutely terrified of a maths teacher. She was a dragon. At the end of the day, she just set our maths homework, and I would sit there very attentively, because a very good boy. Yes, miss. Understand that, miss. Absolutely fantastic, miss. Bell went, 
Can't wait to get out of that bloody place. Meet all my mates and I go, guys, what was she talking about? She might have been speaking Dutch. Like, what have we got to do for our maths and work? And then my friends would turn around to me and go, Nathan, don't know. <laughs> Similar correlation there. So now I'm going to move on to smart cities. Ugh, smart cities. Wow. I've had the mild pleasure of working in smart city projects across Europe. And they can be some of the most beige of places. And not always the best at trying to explain themselves. With words such as IoT and wearables, you can almost forgive yourself for thinking that they actually want to come across technocratic. And, you know, they do fantastic work. I'm not dissing them. They're really important to the people in the place. But it needs to be more across the board. For example, a person who leads an innovation hub should have the same amount of influence as someone who leads a tenants and resident association. They're just as important to the people and the place. You need to make sure the right people are around the table, not just those with the most money or shout the loudest. It's really important because you do have to consider as well, like if I was trying to explain Internet of Things to Leslie from Wensfield Community Development Trust, I got a feeling they'd be falling asleep before I can even say the word connectivity, and I would be. It is a very boring theme. What I want you to take away as well, that when people start talking about smart cities, I don't know if you work in social entrepreneur or whatever, it doesn't mean anything. There's no legal definition of what smart cities is, so why keep banging on about it? I always say it is where it needs to be for the people and the place. Simple as that. Now, let's just say you work outside the borough and you wanted to bring a smart city thinking project to your place of work. And you say you worked in somewhere like the Black Country. I would probably advise you to start from a community charter, a citizen's charter, and work your way up from there. Instead of trying to copy really highly innovative places like Seoul, Santander, San Francisco, because they have completely different infrastructure. And I, and I know that's really obvious, but people do set those comparisons. We need less Silicon Valley and more Sandwell Valley. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was into punk. And then I guess you grow up and you change. You go into a career, and then you change to that career because the people around you, the social cultures, the language, but that's crap. Your, la your career should change to you because you're the important one. You're the people who can make change. I really think that people who work in civic technology can learn a lot from punk rock. It's fast, it's to the point. No BS. But some of the things we've talked about today, I do think there's one ideology that's missing, and that's community development. If we can help our communities to be more resilient, they'll open up to these different new ideas instead of trying to force it onto them. I'm going to leave you with a quote. It's a bit weird for a TEDx talk. It's from Sid Vicious. Yeah. He once said that it's really easy to make music. Get an instrument, you go twang, and there you go, easy peasy. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's make music people want to hear in our communities, but more importantly, understand. Thank you very much. <laughs>